the utility of image-enhanced endoscopy and Lugol's for the assessment of esophageal squamous carcinoma. This is a 51-year-old man that was referred for assessment and potential resection of an esophageal squamous lesion shown to be at least high-grade dysplasia on biopsy from the referring center. A staging CT PET scan did not demonstrate any metastatic disease and a diagnostic endoscopy was performed. White light demonstrates a slightly red Paris 2A plus 2C lesion approximately 27 centimeters from the incisors. Other than the clearly depressed area, no other high-risk features such as nodular protrusion or poor tissue pliability with insufflation and deflation were present. The Pentax OptiVista platform has two optical filters available, Optical Enhancement Mode 1 and Optical Enhancement Mode 2. In addition, with the use of the MagnaView gastroscope, formal magnification up to 135 times is possible. Optical Enhancement Mode 1 is comprised of the wavelengths 415 and 540. This is comparable to NBI and BLI with the Olympus and Fujifilm platforms respectively. Optical Enhancement Mode 2 is comprised of the wavelengths 415, 540, and 650. The lesion is then examined with Optical Enhancement Mode 1. As a result of highlighting the vasculature, this lesion appears darker than the normal background squamous mucosa. The lesion is then examined with Optical Enhancement Mode 2. Compared to standard white light endoscopy, the redness of the lesion and the delineation of the margins is enhanced. With the use of magnification and optical enhancement mode 1, the IPCLs can be characterized. Here we see a normal loop structure, non-dilated and slightly elongated IPCLs indicating non-neoplastic squamous mucosa. We then shift our attention to the lesion. With magnification, we can see that the IPCLs have become somewhat more irregular with a larger and variable caliber. However, the loop structure is still maintained. This is indicative of M1, M2 carcinoma. In the area of depression, there is a different pattern that is visible. Here we have B2 vessels. The caliber of the vessels is larger and the loop structure is completely lost. In addition, there is a reticular pattern noticeable. B2 vessels indicate M3 SM1 carcinoma, and the reticular pattern is indicative of poor differentiation. A 1.5% Lugol solution is then instilled using a spray catheter. With white light, after about 30 seconds, the lesion shows up as a Lugol voiding lesion. This is indicative of squamous dysplasia. This is also appreciated with Optical Enhancement Mode 2. At 3 minutes with white light, the lesion demonstrates the pink color sign which is strongly indicative of at least mucosal carcinoma. The pink color sign is further enhanced with the use of Optical Enhancement Mode 2. Using Optical Enhancement Mode 1, the silver sign is demonstrated which is the equivalent to the pink color sign in that it indicates at least mucosal carcinoma. Here we can see the various macroscopic findings of squamous cell carcinoma with white light, imaged enhanced endoscopy, as well as Lugol's. With the closed tip of the dual knife, the lesion is then marked in preparation for resection. A generous submucosal injection at the margins is then performed. We then perform a semi-circumferential, superficial epithelial incision. The reason for the incision being superficial initially is to ensure that the submucosal vessels are not severed, as the bleeding would then impair submucosal plane visualization. Once there is adequate exposure of the submucosa, we can then select the precise depth of the submucosal dissection. Since there was suspicion of submucosal invasion, a deeper submucosal dissection was performed. We can also appreciate the utility of the transparent distal attachment, which allows for traction to be applied to the submucosa while maintaining a good working space. 
the injection of the knife is also demonstrated, allowing for a quick and effective submucosal injection to maintain a safe dissection plane. Here we can see the final defect post ESD. Here is the gross specimen, with the depressed area containing the B2 vessels and reticular pattern outlined in red. Here we can see the corresponding pathology, demonstrating SM2 moderate to poorly differentiated squamous cell carcinoma. Under high power, we can also see lymphovascular invasion. Due to the high risk features, the patient went on to receive an esophagectomy. Here we can see the esophagectomy specimen. In panels A and B, we see the proximal resection margin with lymphovascular invasion by the squamous cell carcinoma. In panel C, using the D240 stain, the lymphatic space is highlighted. In panel D, using the P40 stain, the squamous cell tumor cell nuclei within the lymphatic space are highlighted. And finally, in panel E, we can see metastatic squamous cell carcinoma within a lymph node. This case demonstrates that white light, imaged in hands endoscopy, magnification, and Lugol's each provide a vital and incremental piece of information during the endoscopic assessment of esophageal squamous neoplasia. This cumulative information allows for a more informed discussion with the patient and comprehensive planning in a multidisciplinary setting.